Let's jump right in. Law 15 of the 48 Laws of Power. Through the lens of truth, crush your enemy totally. All great leaders since Moses have known that a feared enemy must be crushed totally. Sometimes they have learned this the hard way. If one ember is left alight, no matter how dimly it smolders, a fire will eventually break out. More is lost through stopping halfway through total annihilation. The enemy will recover and will seek revenge. Crush him, not only in body, but in spirit. You be taking stuff too far. You just be saying stuff. You be saying stuff because you think it's true. You be saying it because you heard somebody else say it. You be saying it because it feel good to say. Even if it make you feel bad later. Never even realizing that because of this loose, unmanaged tongue of yours, you have tolerated so many poisonous paradigms that have plagued you from the inside out because everything you harbor on the inside manifests on the outside. We, we can establish that, right? We can say that we honestly took that when we read the Kabbalion, correct? Or have we found a way to justify and excuse our way out of our world being a reflection of the world that we come from because most walk in absolute delusion and have no idea that they originate from such a divine place? No idea that they include, in case, such a divine source. And from that inner darkness, from that ignorance, we see universal confusion. We see delusions running rampant, illusions all over the place, even in Law 15. But again, remember, when you are inside of this illusional race trying to win illusional first place, you better listen to Robert Greene. Robert Greene knows something. Inside of the physical plane, outside the awareness, of the truth that governs it. I get it. You think you got to do what you got to do. I get it. You got to do what you got to do until you're able to do what you want to do because you walk in an illusion that you were put inside of an experience that you have no control over or very little control over or you have to react to the inevitable things that befall upon you. Understand you are everything that the source is except the sustainer of all things and the savior of other people. You got all of the good parts of the job. The only parts of the identity of the father that you do not carry is the weight of having to carry all things that were created and having to sustain all things that were created. You don't have that issue. You don't even have the capacity. So understand, if you had that responsibility, like you often try to give yourself with the situations and the imaginationships in your life, you have full control of them. You are the author of them. You decide when they begin, when they end. You are the one who is doing or not doing the very thing that sustains it. And that's why everything in your look crumbly, terribly formatted kingdom be falling apart and eventually disappearing because it was all illusionary from the first place. You latched on to something materialistic. You latched on and began to suck virtue that you were designed to extend from another person. So when they start telling you nice things and they start looking at you with the googly eyes, you got beyond offended. You were beyond hurt. You were robbed. You were absent of something that belonged to you. And that gives you the right to lash out and act the fool with people that you say you love. All because they're not extending to you your version, your definition, your perspective of what love is. You have to understand, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes,
sometimes me loving you is me not partnering with everything that you're saying in a moment that you have begun to identify yourself by something other than the truth of our design. Sometimes the best thing I can do for you is reject the very thing that means the most to you. Sometimes the very most advantageous action that I can take on behalf of being partnered with another person is to not partner in what they have decided it's best for themselves to dump their attention into. I can't give my attention to an illusion because you think it's true and call myself a good friend. When I see you leave the, cor the course of reality, when I see you no longer abiding by truth, it is my duty to stand firm in truth, be a full expression of what it is to be identified by nothing other than the divine source that has given me all things and dominion and the right to rule. It is my job to remind you of what you've forgotten, not my job to forget what you had forgotten and partner with you inside of an illusion that has tore your life into pieces so that my life can follow and we can feel closer. No. Robert Greene tells us, when you have an enemy, you annihilate them completely. You don't just defeat them. You don't just humiliate them. You destroy them by the definition, not figuratively speaking. You make sure that there is absolutely no way that what once was a threat to you can ever threaten you again. And there's only one way to do that. And it is not the way that Robert Greene tells us to approach the situation. Understand, you keep running into obstacles because you have partnered with the idea that obstacles are an inevitable part of your course. And it's not only a part of the course, it's a part of your identity to overcome them. It's literally what you've been called to. Reacting to the illusion that you created in the darkness, unaware that your attention was calling to you everything that you gave it to. Blaming external sources for these issues, attacking external sources for these issues, disconnecting inevitably over these issues that we create and blame other people for. You're writing a script, shooting a film, sitting down with the popcorn and your drink afterwards, totally dissatisfied with the storyline, the characters, and the quality of the production. Who is it that you're gonna insult other than you? You shot it, you wrote it, you found and casted every role. You demanded that they be there. And then you played out the part of each scene that you now gripe over. You hate your past. Some of us have grown indifferent to it. But when I think about my past, whether I'm feeling in that moment indifferent or I'm feeling in that moment a bit heavy for my previous mistakes that I can no longer beneficially harbor and look at, I can never go back and undo and retry. When I'm looking at those moments, I embrace the fact that in that moment, I made the wrong decision for myself, thinking that it was the absolute best route that anyone could take. Not only for me, for everyone. I, some, some of these plans 
I even called around and told other people they were so good that they should try it. And now when I look in hindsight, I see everything that I never want to return to. But I don't omit the fact that in the moment of the past that I'm reflecting on, there was a version of myself present, fully convinced that the route that we took in that moment was advantageous, beneficial, and really what we wanted to do. And now we raise our children and we speak about them living a life where they're equipped to do the things that they desire to do and not what they feel like they have to do like we feel like we've settled for. And we act as if it's an economical reason behind the abandonment of our desires and our dreams. Or it was growing into adulthood and accepting responsibility for children and the, then the abandonment of our dreams. By the time you laid down with the goofy girl that you ended up on child support with behind that child, you had already strayed far, far away from your dreams. By the time you laid down with buddy with no job, by the time you let him take you on the third date and you, you withheld yourself the first two times, you had already been terribly distracted and who created the, the distraction other than you thinking that you wanted something for yourself that was going to benefit you? <laughs> you can't annihilate enemies from the outside. The enemies that you encounter on the outside all come from within. Every monster that you encounter first was drawn, drafted, revised, encouraged, enriched, and presented on the inside. You gave your attention to something that you didn't want and it surfaced on the outside. You gave your attention to the possibility of you not reaching your goals. So things like obstacles and enemies began to surface in your presentation to fulfill the role that you had called and cast it for. Not because it's inevitable and it's a part of life for you. Not because this is something that falls on everyone and it's something that you shouldn't see as weird or strange. It's not weird or strange for anyone that operates in ignorance and darkness. It is absolutely form for one who has remembered his own or her own form and returned back to original status, which is abundance, truth, love, happiness, peace, prosperity, and lightness. If you're everything, if you were created and I was created to be everything that our source is, find me one time in actuality, I'm not talking about in scripture. Do not take me to Jesus wept. Because if we understood why the character of Jesus was weeping in front of the tomb of Lazarus. I don't think that we would even go there as a reference to us having found or being able to identify at any point. Our source, our father, our all being sad. You do understand that the truth sets you free, right? And it's the lie and the illusion and what we believe to be true in the absence of truth that causes us suffering and sadness, right? So why would God suffer? If God is who we say God is and God knows only truth, could never lie and entertains no illusion. What is there to be sad about? You, regardless of the condition of your container, you, regardless of the level of awareness that you carry, have not changed the truth of yourself. And God only sees the truth of every thing that he looks at. So when he looks at you, he does not see the delusion, the illusions, the partnership with lies, 
the absence of faith, the high level of things that you do that express an absence of awareness of value and worth inside of yourself. So how do you annihilate your enemy? How do you annihilate those who have opposed you and set themselves against you with the mindset to do evil towards you? How do you annihilate them completely rather than postpone the experience like you've been doing? Fear has postponed and kept alive the very thing that you've been trying to destroy. The ego and its many plans. When I say the Legion of Voices, I, I hope that you understand that I'm not referring to a bunch of strange, different voices that you hear on the inside of you and that, that keep changing. No, I'm talking about the voice that you entertain on the inside of you that you're convinced is you. That's always giving you a bunch of different plans, taking you a bunch of different ways, scattering you. And then when you do come in the rea into the reality that the voices inside of you got it wrong, they just shift the presentation and change it again. And you trust them blindly one more time. I'm talking about those voices. I'm talking about the voice that you thought was you. The voice that sometimes sounds like your mother, sounds like your father, sounds like your friends, sounds like you, sounds like things you've read, sounds like things you've been through, sounds like things you've seen, sounds like things you believe. I'm talking about those whispers. I'm talking about those screams. Stop following them. It's as simple as that. Realize, embrace the fact that you don't know. In the present moment, we don't know what's coming next. I have absolutely no idea what's coming next. I don't know what the next day holds. I don't know what the next hour holds, the next minute, the next second. But I do know that I've been given the gift of life. I do know that I am an extension of an eternal being, so that makes me eternal. I do know. That anything I ask for, the, the universe that operates in accordance with my father's laws will provide for me because it's the way daddy set it up for me and set it up for you. Understand, we are not talking about asking the universe to give us anything because the universe has nothing to give you. <laughs> All things belong to source. And if you and Source are one, all things belong to you. This universe was given to you because it belongs to your father. So you've been offered dominion over it. You've been given the ability to speak to it. You've been given the authority to reign. Not over other people on the land, you've been given the authority to reign over the land. Robert Greene say, don't just destroy their body. And he does go into details in the book. And he talks about how he is not calling for mass murders. He's not telling you to go out and kill people in the flesh. He's talking about the competition. He's talking about the game. He's saying when you have your enemy, you have your opposition, you have somebody who is challenging your expression of ultimate power so that you can yield more power over the people who perceive you to have all power already. He's saying when you have them in a state of vulnerability, when you have them at a place of weakness, you strike in such a way that does not allow for them to return or avenge themselves. If you have people in your life that you do not enjoy, that are no longer beneficial to you, that you embraced at a time when you were partnered with lack and partnered with insufficiency of self, and these people have played the role of extending to you the temporary 
substitute of true value by giving you the form and shadow of such in various ways that has caused for you to accept them and embrace them on an exclusive or special level that does the very same thing for them that they are doing for you. Nothing but a bunch of insecurity catering. I'm just holding your ego together while you holding mine together. And because we both are desperate for our egos to be a reality, if we don't partner in anything else, you have an ally in making it believable that the ego is real. Until you have come into the realization of how much stress and strain this process causes you and the relationships that you cherish. <laughs> There's only one way for you to inevitably destroy an experience of an opposition. You're gonna have to break up with the paradigm that there are enemies, that there are oppositions and people that can actually harm you. You're going to have to partner with the truth that you cannot be harmed. You are eternal. And there is no one that can oppose you. True, I get it. There are people who have it in their head that they don't like you. There are people who are in competition with you, who are racing after materialistic things, racing after status, status points and milestones that you also are under the impression would, that would benefit you to, to meet first. But I'm talking about a reality. I'm talking about how that person not liking you never changes your identity. I'm talking about how that person who is always going and trying to get out in front of your pursuit with information that sallies your name and smears spaghetti sauce on your face so that people don't work with you and engage with you and you can't elevate. I'm talking about how they can never stop the people of God who are walking in truth and alignment who have been sent or directed or instructed on the inside to extend themselves to you. It won't be these people's stories that stops you from being supported. It'll be you out here going to war with these people over their stories that causes you to misrepresent yourself and show people around you that are walking in the light that you have not yet discovered the truth of eternity. Peaceful people don't find themselves in fights every day. Understand that when you're typically, when you're not bothering anybody, it's very rare that a confrontation or altercation finds itself in front of you. And when it does, for those people who don't bother anybody, when the confrontation and the altercation does surface, as things get loud and chaotic, and the people around you begin to observe what it is that's taking place, it's always been in my nature when I see somebody who bothers nobody being bothered to go and stand in the gap and deal with the bully. If nothing else, I do want you to understand that if you have an issue with a person, the issue is not solved by the attacking or the disruption of the connection with the person. There's a paradigm not between the two of you. There is a paradigm in both of you, which is how y'all ended up in front of each other. That is a barrier to the love that is natural to the both of you. Find the paradigm, eliminate the paradigm, replace that paradigm with the truth. Not with another messed up paradigm. Because we good for that. We will substitute a non-beneficial paradigm for another non-beneficial paradigm. And say that we always roll with the devil that we know. 
we have such stupid ways of talking. There is no benefit with rolling with the devil that you know. See, because you'll replace a non-beneficial paradigm with a new non-beneficial paradigm and think that you've changed everything. When ultimately, in principle and in truth, nothing has been changed at all. You still are partnered with unbeneficial paradigms. You still believe lies are true. And that belief in lies being true will cause you to carry unnatural concerns, worries, and desires. And from that seat, you will begin to experience by the universal principle of your assumptions hardening into fact so that you can see the error of your ways on the inside and you can correct them. You can align. You are capable of constructing and deconstructing. 